Poirot, enough! You have kept us in suspense ever since we left Lausanne. Forgive me, my friend. Detective Locke and I needed the time to put the last pieces of the puzzle in their proper places. I'll fill in where I can, but this is Mr. Poirot's show. I confess I can't help, but I feel a certain déjà vu. You are correct, Doctor. We have been here before. However, without you, we wouldn't have been able to reach the true conclusion of this story. My friends, your attention, please. I hope you have finished your dessert. You have every right to think the solution to the murder of Ratchet is a closed book. You are wrong. I, Poirot, admit that I was wrong. There is a final chapter. What in bloody hell? What does he mean? Perhaps if we are silent... Monsieur Poirot will explain. Most of us naturally expect a journey by train to proceed in an orderly fashion from station to station. But this journey has gone off the rails. A comfortable journey, which should have been restful, turned out to be quite a challenge for my little gray cells. I beg your indulgence. I know it will be painful, but I must update you on the strange turn the Ratchet murder investigation has taken. I had two hypotheses, as you recall. A stranger boarded the train in Vinkovsky, killed Ratchet, and then exited the train unobserved. That was the first possibility. The second solution gave us 12 jurors who condemned Ratchet to death for the kidnapping and murder of Daisy Armstrong. My friend, Book, properly chose the first solution for the authorities. However, thanks to Dr. Constantine here, a 13th stab wound was discovered, throwing that solution into disarray. Moreover, the words of a witness called into question the chronology of the night of the murder upon which the first two solutions were based. Detective Locke? Michael admitted to having been absent several times during the night. His absence, therefore, gave multiple opportunities for a 13th murderer to slip into Ratchet's room before the other 12 jurors lined up to stab him. You are saying the man Ratchet was... was... when we... Yes. You executed a man who was already dead. But there were other suspects that night. Other suspects? Who? They stand before you. Mr. Fauché? Mr. Maury and Ms. Nielsen, and they all also had a hole in their stories about their movements that night. Mr. Poirot? Most of you don't know it, but there was a second murder in Venice. Mein Gott, another murder. The victim was a man named Aziz Wadi, a banker in Geneva who was on the payroll of Ratchet. He looked after the money Ratchet obtained from the Armstrong Handsome. Ratchet needed money and arranged to meet Mr. Wadi in Venice. One of these three knew about that money. Now, each of them had an alibi of a sort. But if any of their alibis was a lie, that person had time to murder Monsieur Wadi. Monsieur Fauché, Mademoiselle Nielsen, and Monsieur Maury. One of you murdered Ratchet and Monsieur Wadi. Are you kidding? I pour drinks for our guests. I don't murder them. It's nonsense. You are accusing me because of my knives? But why would one of my employees kill Ratchet? The killer's motive for killing Ratchet was revenge but not for Daisy's death. The motive for Aziz Wadi's murder was also revenge. Mr. Wadi was helping Ratchet. Ratchet had an accomplice in the kidnapping named Noah. They kidnapped Daisy together. Ratchet stole 
restored the ransom money in a Swiss bank that protected anonymous clients. He forced Monsieur Wadi to watch over the money. Once enough time had passed, Ratchet felt it was safe to have Monsieur Wadi bring him cash whenever Ratchet needed it. The serial numbers of the bills would still be in a file, but no one would be actively checking it. Precisely. But Ratchet didn't just keep the ransom in his safety deposit box. There was something much worse. There was something much worse than Daisy's ransom money in that safety deposit box. During her investigation, Detective Locke found evidence proving that Ratchet was what is known as a trophy killer. He kept souvenirs of his crimes. We found trophies in the safety deposit box. There were others in a cabin Ratchet used in the Berkshire Mountains, including a beloved toy of little daisies. If I'd have known that, I would have cut the bastard's head off. Little gray cells did not let me down. The bracelet found in the safety deposit box was also on Noah's wrist in a photograph. It's obvious Ratchet killed Noah. And therefore, at last, I can tell you with absolute certainty who the murderer of Ratchet and Monsieur Wadi is. Another delightful trophy for my collection. Mademoiselle Nielsen has the same bracelet as the one found in the safety deposit box in Geneva. A trophy from a victim of Ratchet. Noah. Having a similar bracelet doesn't prove anything. Yes, that might be true. If there were not an inscription on it. Mr. Poirot, you're right. The bracelet looks similar to mine, but I have no idea what the marks on it mean. I just like the design. The marks are not random, mademoiselle. These are special bracelets. They are called Morse code bracelets. Because, well, you know why. The marks are Morse code. Happily, I learned Morse when I was a young man doing my service for the Belgian army. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. On the bracelet found in Ratchet's safety deposit box was the name Freya in Morse code. Your first name. It belonged to your father, Noah. Noah Nielsen. Let's stop playing this little game, mademoiselle. What does yours say? Noah? It says father. Ratchet, that bastard, she kept my father's bracelet as a, as a trophy. Thank you. I have to admit your timing for Ratchet's murder was perfect. Do you mind if I continue? Would it matter? Go ahead. You've earned the right to crow. I do not make bird sounds, mademoiselle. I take no pleasure in this. You drugged Ratchet's dessert to ensure he would be unconscious when you went to his room. You stole a knife from Monsieur Mori. 
If it was identified as the murder weapon, he would be accused. You knew Pierre Michel would leave the train for a smoke whenever it was stopped at a station. At Vinkovsky, you waited until he was on the station platform. Then, you carefully made your way along the first-class corridor to Ratchet's room. You entered Ratchet's room with the pass key. Accessible to all employees in the crew quarters. You stabbed Ratchet at midnight. But that knife, where is it? Probably thrown out of Ratchet's window before the train left the station. A thorough search after the snow melts should turn it up. My beautiful knife! Then... You carefully returned to the crew quarters, replaced the passkey, and returned to your poker game. Et voilà. The affair was not so complicated in the end. But what made the crime seem more complex? Well... It was us. Exactly. The twelve jurors who proceeded to carry out their far more complicated plan, literally in the dark, without realizing that the man was already dead. Speaking only for myself, of course, but I believe we would have invited you to join us. Ms. Nielsen, you killed Ratchet because he killed your father. Your motive is crystal clear. But why did you kill Aziz Wadi? It's because of Aziz that my father died. My father knew Aziz was the only one with access to Ratchet's safe. So he convinced Aziz to steal the money from the safety deposit box. But Aziz was too afraid of Ratchet. Instead, he betrayed my father by reporting him to Ratchet. Obviously, Ratchet then murdered my father. Aziz was just as guilty of my father's death as Ratchet. Ratchet was the worst of humanity. But Monsieur Wadi, if you knew his story... My father is dead because of him. I will not debate the point with you, mademoiselle. He had done nothing to justify his death. I do not see any extenuating circumstances that should allow you to escape justice. You will be arrested at the Garde de Lyon when we arrive in Paris. Judge and jury are you, Monsieur Poirot. And you get away with it. It must be nice. But think of this. I know what you did. What you all did. She's right. She could turn us all in. Relax. Hector, is it? Your secret is safe with me. I'm not going to jail. Farewell, Poirot. Enjoy your victory. Stop. No, Freya, don't jump. You're going to die. I've made my choice. We'll let fate decide. No! She jumped! Off the train. Even if she hit the water, considering the height... I doubt she survived. And with this tunnel, either way, she's gone, Poirot.